Good evening, brother, and welcome to the next episode of the Return of the of the Soul Radio Show. How are you? All good, thank you. Thanks for having me again. I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, I love the subject uh, we're going to be talking about. So, yeah, really looking forward to it. And um, thanks for having me on again. Would you like to explain to the audience the subject we're speaking tonight? Uh, yeah, we're going to uh, speak about psychedelics and... Um, we're going to touch up on uh, what psychedelics are, how they ancient cultures, and also uh, we're going to touch up on different types of psychedelics and what they're used mm-hmm. for and how they're grown. And also, um, personally, I'm going to touch up on my experience with certain psychedelics. And um, yeah, I've got loads of notes and loads of quotes to read out and loads of information. Perfect. To- Perfect. Would you like to to start? Yeah. Okay. So j- before we get uh, into it, I'm just gonna um, read a quick uh, definition from Dictionary dot com about what okay. a psychedelic is. So uh, here it says, "Of or noting a mental state characterized by a profound sense of intensified sensory perception, sometimes accompanied by severe." perceptual distortion and hallucinations and by extreme feelings of either euphoria or despair. Um, Obviously, probably most of our listeners already know what it is, but it's always good just to give... Yeah, clarify. Mm -hmm. Also, some people would maybe refer to them as drugs or there's different ways of referring to them, but um, yeah, psychedelics have been used um, a lot in ancient cultures and have been really, they've been outlawed in more recent times by um, our governments and the elite families for particular reasons that we're going to delve into today. But um, yeah, just uh, Carrying on the subjects of like what psychedelics are as well. I don't know if you heard, have you heard of Terence McKenna? Have you heard of Terence McKenna, sister? Can you enlighten me more on that. Okay, yeah, Terence McKenna. He's like an author and a um, researcher on psychedelics, and. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, a quote from him was uh, the psychedelics. The psychedelic experience is essential to understanding your humanness as much as having sex, having a child, having responsibilities, dreams and hopes. But they have be- they have become illegal uh, to humans so they can only um, wander in a certain area of consciousness because, like, just in our usual day-to-day... Um, uh, living without taking psychedelics we can only like uh, the body is almost like a shield from uh connecting with the Try rest of the yeah yeah the rest of uh, the, the frequency of the uh, world so um with psychedelics it's like a gateway to kind of it lifts the veil of your ego and connects you to the source more and you can see things in different perceptions and stuff. Exactly, but what, definitely. That's but that's why they have been made illegal because if we, because once you start taking psychedelics, you start questioning things a lot. That's one of the main things that a lot of people do is uh, when they partake in psychedelics, they question government, they question authority, they question this, and also. There's a lot of healing and medicinal benefits to psychedelics, which we're going to get into as well. Um, so, yeah, they're the like, main reasons why they've kind of been kept hidden or secret from us. But also the rise of the Internet has helped us uh, gain more access and more knowledge about it. It's not so hidden anymore. True. Yes. And... um. You know, I was talking about this topic yesterday because I was talking with a friend of mine about what is um, the difference between Awaska and Iboga. I don't know if you've heard about Iboga, but it's uh, probably the most strongest and giving you a lot of uh, healing 
um, medicine. Uh, we'll yeah. touch up on that because I would like to compare. Uh, just for, to clarify for everybody who's listening, I have not tried any of the psychedelics, which is my dream. I would love to try them because I, I do question myself to the point that I just want to get deeper and deeper yeah. into myself and find you know, what is my true purpose is probably everybody wonders the same thing. I was talking about uh, about relationship and how this can actually, you know, help a person. Because if you don't don't know yourself, you know, how can you devote your life to somebody else? Exactly. Have a kid, you know, and not even knowing the deepest depths and, you know, even the darkest shadows of yourself. And if the other person accepts you for who you are, like the real person that you are after you find yourself with the psychedelics, then I think you're going to have like the strongest bond ever. You know, yes. not like not, not like marriages that they're scratching barely the surface with... um you know, I'll marry you because you have a Lamborghini or you have like a business and, exactly. and so forth, so forth, you know. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's it's so mad you touched up on that subject because talking again with someone as well and we're saying mm. there are a lot of people that are with each other, but they're not actually soulmates. They're just, like you said, with each other because they can provide them with nice clothes or a nice car, uh, holidays or um, this and that, but they're not connected spiritually. And this is why I think there's like a lot of divorces and a lot of single parents and stuff because people were just doing it through culture rather than actually having feelings for each other, like on a deep level. Yeah, even if they have feelings for each other, it's 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 the basic feelings of uh, need, need and security. Yeah. They do have the feelings of the the survival they own the survival mode and be like oh he's gonna be like you know saving me from being starving and homeless so i'll marry him exactly. but it, that doesn't doesn't have anything to do with the soul and down the road when you really you know you're in a relationship with this person and you find out that they're so different than you are then the divorce is kind of like unavoidable so using the medicine, using the psychedelics to find yourself first, it's for me, I think it's a major big step to to create a really long lasting relationship with somebody that it's really going to accept you for who you really are. And, you, you know, you're going to know that you are connected on more than one level because the physical bond and the physical relationship if that's the, the the foundation and the ground of it, it's going to be the first one to break, and it's easily breakable. So, I couldn't agree with you any more. Spot on. I mean, because, um, like you said, how can you devote yourself to someone else before you don't even know yourself? Do you get what I mean? So, yeah. it, you, it, it's a brilliant point. But um, touching up on a few more quotes on what um, Terence McKenna yeah. said about psychedelics. He said that um, they give unity with the fellow man, but somehow forbidden. This is an outrage and a sign for cultural cultural immaturity. The fact that we tolerate it shows that we live in a society that's oppressed. Mm -hmm. So he's saying that um, because it's because it's forbidden and we're not making a fight for it to be more uh, readily available for people to use. It shows that society's dumbed down. But personally, I, I think it's on the up. Like It's um, a lot more widely and uh, accepted these days. Because I don't know if you know in America now, a lot of states are um, have legalised cannabis for recreational yes. and, and medicinal use. So uh, that's a big step. And that's a subject that I'm going to touch up on a bit after because that relates to myself as well. But um, an another uh, funny um, quote from Terence McKenna was that uh, if all you got is to be awake and sleep, you can't go far with it. But if you have awake, sleep and DMT as points, you can build much more of a rich dimension of consciousness. 
So what he's basically is trying to say is if you're if you're only in two dimensions or two different types of states, you can only go so far. But with the third state, it's kind of it almost plays the mediator of the the physical and the spiritual world. And then you have more of a wider dimension and a more of a wider outlook on life. Rather than if you're if you haven't experimented in it, it just leaves you in how can I say like one corner rather than exploring the whole box. So that's what he's trying to say about that. And another funny um, (laughs) quote he said was that um, psychedelic feeds off intelligence and says, if you're stupid and not spiritual, it won't work, basically. (laughs) What he's trying to say is if you're not interested in it, it won't be interested in you. So there has to be some uh, kind of relationship there. But... um, just to follow on uh, from this, um, I spoke about how it was used in a lot of ancient cultures around the world, it's, and it's known to be like um, like psychedelics have been used for like thousands and thousands of years, and um, hello, brother. Hi, sister. Yeah, I was just going to go on to um, talk about how um, psychedelics were used in the ancient world and like what part yep. of the world used certain um, and, uh, plants and hallucinogenics. So like, uh, uh, I don't know if you heard of the Amanita muscario mushroom. It's like no. the, big, it's no. the big red mushroom with the white dots on it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I've seen it. I've seen actually. I've seen it not in real life, but I mean, seen pictures. Yeah, it's like, yeah it's just through researching. Um, a lot of the shamans um, use that, and a really interesting thing actually is that um, it only works through um, going through the human body. So what they do is that um, a shaman uh, cooks it and then drinks it. And then urinates it, and and then the uh, the patients have to drink it. That's the it, it has to go through someone's body for it to be activated, which is really strange. But um, it was very interesting fact when I came across that. I don't know if he was aware of that. Wow! So they have to drink somebody's urine with the yeah. with the mushroom inside. Yeah, that's... otherwise it won't work. Wow, that's really interesting. Uh, so I know they connect with like spirits of the forest. They connect with animals. I guess. Do you know what my thought of this is? You know how we always speak about like connecting to our avatar, connecting to the higher self. I think that because we we live in this three dimension or we live in this four dimension, you you name it. You know, everybody is on their own evolution process. But I think that when you, even though I haven't tried it, that's how I imagine that if I try a Waska or if I try Boga, for example, yeah. I think that what's going to happen, it's going gonna, it's gonna to open the different dimensions for me so I can connect to my avatar. And so my avatar is no longer going to be something, you know, out there, but it's going to be something inside me that's already unlocked so I can actually use it in this world. Yeah. You know? it's kind of like you connect to the other dimensions and once you've unlocked it you already have the knowledge and the skills to you know use it yeah a lot of uh, people who uh, do like um, mushrooms and like all sorts of psychedelics uh, ayahuasca and even with marijuana they say like when they have like hallucinogenic states or altered states of consciousness the spirit is always like um, of a lady and it's always like a fairy anthrope, like half human and half animal. So it might be a lady with a serpent's head or a jaguar's head or yeah, uh, and um, or uh, what other like or bear or it could be like a toad. There's like a lot of people who have psychedelic experiences always talk about like they see half human and half animal entities. Oh, I see. Yeah. And so it's. That's interesting. Yeah, because if you think 
um, in ancient Egypt on the walls and stuff. They'd like, yeah, uh, they're all got, have, like, have yeah, like a falcon or a eagle or a, you know yeah. a crocodile. They're all got different. Um, uh, yeah, they're they're all fairy anthropes. That means half animal and half human. But do you do you think that basically now, as you speak about all the things in Egypt, do you yeah. think that maybe people that they in ancient Egypt they have had like a, they've had um, um, for for example ayahuasca or any other psychedelic and when they had it they've they've seen those uh, they've seen those creatures and they've you know illustrated yeah. them on the walls. Ex- Exactly, you've just saved me some talking. <laughs> that's what oh, I was gonna... really? I actually I did not know that that's what that's what it is. I was just <laughs> I was just thinking my head. Maybe they thought that that's what the gods look like, and that's why they yeah. just decided they were gonna, you know. That's that's exactly it. That's why, yeah. So um, wow. there's, all, there's also of... in um, France. There's these caves. Yeah. And, there's they, there's like a very famous picture of like a ball and stuff like that, and mm-hmm. also it had some someone said that it might have some reference to Taurus, but I don't know if it does. But yeah, in the south of France, oh, what's the place called? I can't remember, but there's a place, a cave in the south of France, where there's paintings from people who did like psychedelics and stuff, and it's really, really, really interesting. But um, also like um. Uh, in like Mexico, they use something called the peyote cactus and um, uh, San Pedro uh, cactus. Uh, in um, the Gnostics, also um, use mushrooms, and they used it to awake the divine spark within. And the Gnostics are known as like the original Christians. Basically, they were like. How they were basically like syncretists. They didn't believe in a uh, physical and historical Jesus. They saw it more as an energy. Yeah, that, which I I believe it is. Yeah, same as well. You and believe? Then, that's another thought that it just sprang to my mind. Mm. Yeah. Because because their their visions are about like half human, half you know animal. Maybe yeah. connect to the higher frequencies and higher dimensions. Maybe that's where animals are actually like us like animals are with with a higher consciousness that we see them as right now for example you see a pig and for you just a pig oh and wow yeah that's, that's fourth, maybe at the fourth and the fifth dimension or even you know higher dimensions they they don't really they don't function the way that we see them in this world I, it yeah. just springs to my mind i don't know how that correlates but yeah no that's that's definitely a great observation. Yeah, it's like in the astral realm, it's like yeah. they're almost evolved one step further than they are here. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. That's a that's a really interesting idea. But um, also another um, common thing that a lot of people who do psychedelics, like heavy psychedelics, more like mushrooms and ayahuasca, uh, they always come across like these th- three things in their visions. First, it's like geometric forms and like, patterns and light. Yeah. Then they go through some vortex, and then they enter like a par- parallel universe with yeah. intelligent entities. And this is where these half man and half like human. Um, for me, those vibrations and patterns that you're saying, for me, uh, they receive this as an upgrade. It's like they, they receive like an upgrade energetically. Yeah. That's how I think it is because the patterns are nothing more than a vibrational frequency, which yep. helps the body to vibrate in a different, you know, fine frequency, that's all. Yeah, definitely. There's almost like um, ideas that uh, psychedelics are what um, made early humans evolve to be more clever and uh, have the knowledge to build like civilizations and stuff like that. Yeah, Whereas, maybe that's true. That's yeah. why they were forbidden for us for so yep. long because they wanted to keep us trapped. Yep. Yep. Because um, 
Yeah, the, if you watch like the work of Graham Hancock, he talks a lot about. Um, oh yeah, yeah, I have, I have. Yeah, because he he, uh, he does ayahuasca. He goes to um, the Amazon in Brazil. He's done many sessions and stuff like that. And uh, he also has a lot of um, like uh, how can I say opposition from like mainstream media for a lot mm. of the work he's done as well. Because a lot of like mainstream science. Um, claim that the brain produces the consciousness but whereas more spiritual people uh, we see that the consciousness comes from somewhere else and our body is just like a vehicle or a biological computer that's what i believe yeah i think it comes from somewhere else and then it stays it stays forever it doesn't just you know you die and then your consciousness dies i don't think that's that's possible yeah, because he explains it's like a TV. If you yeah. sm- if you smash the TV, it wouldn't show, but the signal will still be there. But it's just because the TV smashed. That's why it's not working. So that would be like the same with our body. Once our body dies, our consciousness will still be there, but it will just move on to something else. Exactly. Energy only transforms. Never, never lo- lost. Definitely. But um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, speak mainly about uh, cannabis and talk a bit about yeah, yeah. Um, my experience with it and when I started using it and why I started using it and what it's done sure. for me and talk about um, the different types you can get and what it does to you and why it does it to you. So um, basically with myself... Um, I first uh, experimented with cannabis uh, at the end of 2013 and I have been doing so since and I can honestly say it if it wasn't for me experimenting that I probably wouldn't be talking to you or we would have never probably come across each other because once I um, started experimenting with uh, cannabis, it just opened my mind to look into more deeper subjects. And uh, mm. I was always into researching things. But it was more like historical and political and, you know, more... Uh, more earthy rather than looking at the whole spectrum of, like, the spiritual stuff and getting into... Um, yeah, astrology and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I can honestly say it's helped me. Um... Continue, brother, with your story. Yeah, um, what I was saying is, yeah, I started, uh, just a quick recap. Uh, I experimented uh, end of 2013, and since then I've been on my spiritual journey. I've been looking into so many things, meeting so many great people. And yeah, it's just, um, with smoking it, it's just like, it's almost, um, you can kind of, it gives you the ability to uh, step outside the bubble and look at everything else from a different perspective. Yeah. That's what I found with me. And also, it helps you delve into things a lot deeper because you get... Because the thing with cannabis, it amplifies and energises everything you do. What, whatever mood you're in. So, it could also help you, like, balance that as well. But what I'm saying is, like, the intention behind of behind when you're smoking it is a big part of how it will affect you if that yeah. makes sense. Mm-hmm. If your yeah. intention is to do it for an evil purpose and to deceive someone, then it will make you be like that. Or if your intention is to be spiritual and tap into more uh, altered states of consciousness and more spiritual stuff, it will do that. So it's like a relationship, basically. It's literally like mm-hmm. being in a relationship with someone. However you whatever your intention is, that's what you will get out of it. And th- yeah. this also goes with um, the growing of the plant as well. 
Because I don't know if you've seen experiments where they talk to plants nicely. And yes, talk. yes, yes, definitely. Definitely, yeah, so I've this, seen that. So mm. this is the, definitely the same with uh, cannabis and marijuana. If maybe if you smoke it and you get paranoid, maybe it could be that the plant wasn't cultivated well or the energy which was put behind it was negative. But yeah. on the other hand, if it's done professionally and well, then you can get a different um, benefit out of it. But I, I just want to read you some uh, quotes uh, that I was uh, took from a guy called Stephen Gray. He's got a book called Cannabis and Spirituality. And um, go for it. Uh, he was what it is. He done the book, and there's also other authors in the book which um, have done chapters as well. And there's a quote by someone called uh, Jeremy Wolf and it says that pot leaves you naked uh, the first thing you see is yourself so like mm-hmm. what we were talking about earlier how um, doing psychedelics is about finding out about yourself and that's basically what uh, that quote saying it leaves you naked so it kind of strips all the layers all the of... false ego Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, and um, it just makes you uh, see yourself in a different way. Don't take me wrong, as as well as the positive effects, uh, there are, you can have some, it, it depends on the person as well. Everyone's got different um, situations and um, uh, past uh, emotions and you know because it, it can bring out like for some people it can help them other people it can give them psychosis and you know so it, it's just it depends on the individual and what mood they're in and what energy they have around them it all depends yeah. but um going back to um Terence McKenna he said the best place is um, to do any type of psychedelics is when you're alone, because that's when you can really get in touch with yourself. Because he said that a lot of people do it in the wrong circumstances while they're out partying or, and while you're doing that, you're getting a lot of neg- all sorts of energy. You're picking up all sorts of energy and some of it's negative and some of it's good. So you can't get the full, healing effect of it whereas if you do it on your own then you just with yourself but what about ayahuasca and iboga it's really nice to have somebody to look look up for you because they did it can be like a hell of a trip yep definitely yeah i know i agree it's not with all um probably not not all psychedelic but yeah yeah but certain ones like like probably with cannabis uh, it might be better of you being on your own and just kind of taking in whatever your thoughts are telling you. And just because don't take me wrong, like it can, you can be sitting there and you can be thinking of some amazing stuff. And, but also it can take you down very dark roads, but I think it's a good lesson though for us. It it shows us, it shows us the truth, basically. This is the thing with psychedelics. If you're not ready for the truth, it's not for you. Yeah, you're going to get scammed. Yeah, it's basically, it's going to give you a good lesson. And I can definitely say that's that has uh, been the case with me. But just to go a bit more on to um, cannabis and what types there are and what it briefly i'm not going to go into detail and stuff okay uh, for, for people that don't know there's two types of cannabis there's cannabis indica and cannabis sativa and basically i'll go through each one and what they do so cannabis indica is more of a relaxing full body effects and medicinal um it's good for insomnia uh, pain relief and um, in terms of like its physical appearance, it's more shortier, it's more shorter and bushier, 
and it's like born in the mountains and uh, it's a shorter flower time. It grows quicker. With sativa, it's the opposite. It's kind of an uplifting, cerebral, creative uh, strain. So um, it's good for depression and fatigue and uh, ADD. And with sativa, it's like taller plants and it's grown in more... Um, equatorial climates and it takes longer to grow basically so depending on what type of person you are this again you can look at astrology i've looked at all this uh each sign are kind of um suitable for different strains so like for argument's sake if you're an air sign it would be better for you to smoke cannabis indica because if you're too like airy and too all over the place, then with indica, it's more of a relax, it's more of an earthy kind of feeling. Whereas the cannabis sativa is more of a cerebral head feeling. So that's where people go wrong also. Cause some people just think, Oh, all weed or cannabis is just the same, but it doesn't work like that. There are certain types for certain people. Mm. So, like, it's best to know what you want it for as well. So, like, if you want, so if you are, sorry for interrupting you. So, if you are a fire sign as I am now, you know, um, yeah. If I want to get more grounded, then I will choose the type yeah. one. And if I want to get, more yeah, the indica, yeah, more creative and get into the air and kind of have more open mind and ideas. Then I have to choose the type two. Yep, sativa, exactly. Okay. Because even if you look at the name, sativa, it's like um, the top crack, the crown chakra is Saturn. They say so. In the etymology, it connects, and also I think. Um, Indica means Indian cannabis is short for it's grown more in that region, whereas sativa is grown more in the South American and along the equator, like Brazil and Colombia and in certain parts of Africa. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that's just like some uh, basic um, information about the plant and stuff. But um, other stuff that I've uh, uh, put down notes about is um, they also use it uh, in ayahuasca ceremonies yeah. because yeah. It, it it can like soothe or balance the other medicine. So just say, for instance, you have ayahuasca and it's a bit too strong or it's a bit too much. At the end, they might, or during the middle, they might get you to smoke cannabis so that it can kind of balance out the the um, the altered state of consciousness, and you will get more of a, a like of a less of a bumpier ride, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So that's, it's also like a me. It's almost like a mediator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's used in so many different ways. I mean, medically. People use it for cancer. People use it for um, uh, arthritis. People use it for people who have fits. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of a, um, a story. It was on CNN. There was a girl. She was like about five years old and she used to get fits. And they tried all the pharmaceutical medicines and it didn't work. And then um, they they tried cannabis, and her um, her seizures stopped. Yeah, yeah the within cannabis like oil can stop seizures. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it was what they did though is they made it because she was young. They took the THC content out of it, which is the psychoactive uh, part of the plant. And they just used the CBD, which is the more medicinal uh, part of the plant. Mm. So because they didn't want to get her high because she was young. Yeah. So they made her, there's an actual strain named after the girl. It's called Charlotte's Web. Mm. It, 
they sell it in all the dispensaries in America. But um, yeah, but that one's not a psychoactive one. It's just for like, rel- it's more oh, medicinal, relaxing me. your body. And I guess stuff. this one's for me. <laughs> yeah, you know you can get um, CBD oil in Holland and Barrett now. Really? Yeah. No way. Yeah, apparently that's what I was reading. Yeah, we need to check that out well, in person. We need to meet. Yeah, 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 definitely. But um, yeah, I mean, unless you have any uh, questions um, uh, regarding the cannabis thing, um, I can move on to like different subjects. No, I think you can move on. You can move. On. Yep. Yeah, I mean, um, I heard you like mentioning ayahuasca. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, and you were saying that you you would love to. You was interested in taking that. Oh, um. Obviously, um. Like I spoke about Graham Hancock before. He's very uh knowledgeable on this subject as well, and um. Uh, he talks about it a lot, and he explains that actually, um. The uh, plant, the ayahuasca plant, comes from uh. A plant called um, the uh, is it Chacruna? That's it. But what it is, um, it has DMT in it. Do you know what DMT yes, is? Yes, dimethyltryptamine. I know it's yeah. different in the yes. brain. What our, that's right. Yeah, and, and um, basically, um, when you take DMT orally, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't have no effect yes. because there's an yes. enzyme in the gut yes. called the uh, body just breaks it mono- down. It breaks it down. Yeah. So they monoamine mm-hmm. oxidize. But uh, once you mix it with the vine in the yeah. water, yeah. Then and you drink that, then that's when it gives it the effect, basically. Exactly. Yeah. So and I've noticed that a lot of psychedelics have this same kind of concept where. Uh, unless it's combusted, you will, you won't get no psychedelic effects. So if you just ate a cannabis plant, you would get the medicinal effects of it, but you wouldn't get no psychoactive mm. effects of it. It's only when you like uh, smoke it or vape it or uh, have it as a um, edible, like in a cake or something like that. True. That's when you get. Um, the effects of it, but um, yeah, ayahuasca. I mean, have you ever watched the ceremony before? Yes, I've watched so many videos. I actually ordered my ayahuasca uh, tea from from Holland. It was like, oh wow! And I bo- boiled it for hours and hours. It was five hours of boiling, and it was like poof, crazy. And I went to the capital, and I was gonna have. I had a meeting with a shaman who was going to help me to, you know, had the experience. And I slept, yeah. I slept in uh, my friend's house and I put it, I put the, the tea in the fridge and I went to bed. And yeah. the next morning I wake up, I opened the fridge and the tea was gone. And I called my friend and she told me, well, I thought it was an old coffee that was, uh, it was too old. So I threw it in the sink. <laughs> and I, I honestly, I honestly... <laughs> You should, oh, no. you, you should have seen me. My reaction was like, I was going to kill her. Like, literally, I was going to kill her. I was so mad. I called the guy that was waiting for me, the shaman, and I said, look, this is it, this and this happened. And he's like, Tanya, <laughs> maybe it's not the right time for you to have your enlightenment. And to be honest, because I waited a month and a half for this tea to, you know, come from Holland, I was so pissed. And I got it actually for free because... They sent me just a sample just for me to try it once and, you know, and, and say my experience. And, and, and I was going to write, I was going to write a whole story and post on my website as a whole experience. And oh, wow. they didn't even believe me that, that somebody threw it away. They couldn't believe that. And they were like, you probably sold it. And I'm like, no, I didn't. Like, it was <laughs> so bad because they didn't want to send me another one because they thought I'm lying, which was obvious. Yeah. That, you know, they, they, oh wow! That's, so that was my experience mate. with ayahuasca. Like I had a wonderful experience. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of it. Lasts for like 
five hours, I think, and I've seen some of you, like, a lot of people feel sick and get diarrhea yeah, and yeah. it's a really exhausting thing but in a way it must be good because it's probably cleansing it's all cleansing, the... yes so i was reading i did more research on the last kind of boga yesterday so there is a huge difference between those two in in everything like as much as they they're healing like probably the the only thing that's in that they have in common in common is the psychedelics and their do like medicine healing but that's it yeah. they're completely different i don't know how much you know about the boga but um so the ayahuasca is more of a warm a warm feeling when you get it and you you have like more more of a creative side you have visions you have feelings while the yeah. boga you have like more of a thinking process and it's more it's better for people who have like depression and, and mental illness because it it doesn't make you feel but it makes you go deep into yourself it's like it dissolves everything yes. everything you can possibly imagine but connects you deep while the waska is more of a not as you know dark and you know breaking the shadows as much as they boga so it's more of a lighter version and more warm and it doesn't last for that long so if the waska lasts for less then how much, you know, uh, it, the boga can last for 42 hours. And, and it, wow. And it's crazy, yeah. Um, so both of them are quite, quite, quite different. I can even read some, some parts if you want from what I... Yes, you go, go for it. Yeah, you can read it, uh, do, say some stuff, because I've spoke quite a lot, so it'd be good to hear some stuff. From yeah, you. so basically, basically, um, the differences... So if we need to speak about dimensions, uh, as we already saw about uh, the ayahuasca, we talked about the DMT. It says that with the strong correlation between natural DMT release, um, release during physical death, DMT seems to be the getaway for, for after physical realm. And then this is like what happens with the ayahuasca. While the boga shamans speak of going deeper, not Further, they believe um, that the medicine acts as the infinite nature of the soul inside of us, and that the soul's infinite knowledge that extends all the way to the beginning of time. Uh, in my entire, so it can be, uh, sorry, I said 48 hours, 24 hours, so it's only 24 hours encounter with the truth. There was never the feeling that I was accessing anything outside of myself. So this is a story of somebody who actually experienced it. So basically, everything happens inside your heart. That's how he explains it. While the ayahuasca, there is something happens outside of you. It's like you have the feeling you're in a different dimension. While with the, the boga, it's more of like it going into your heart to the deepest depths of your heart, to like the deepest parts of yourself. So there is... there totally different when it comes to that definitely sounds like one got one's about the core and one's of all like one's more like you said about the heart and going deep into yourself and the other one's more about like going up to like different dimensions exactly. it's almost like the two in the two marijuana strains I was yes yeah, kind of one like that yeah yeah, yeah, I understand. So that. it says content delivery in the ayahuasca experience, content is delivered to you largely through images and encounters with other beings. The images then can lead to greater introspection, but it takes some insight, like it's it takes some time to understand what, what the medicine is trying to tell you. And translation, yeah. maybe the translation issue between the dimension, you know, it comes to the non-physical dimension, communication with the physical mind, this takes a lot of time to process. Wow. Wow, the boga experience, there is no translation issue because it is you talking to yourself. And then the guy says, if you cannot understand yourself, then you're in a big trouble. <laughs> so people, you know, people use this to find, you know, the true self. It says, it, it will very bluntly explain to you how you have been fucked up and, te and tell you to shape up. And many of us, that may sound like a father, but this is actually how to find your true destiny. That's what the guy is saying. And of course, wow. of course they, it says that 
you know, the, the two medicines are used for different different things. It says that there is different types of diet, you know, for ayahuasca, you do have to have some kind of diet. You don't eat sugar, dairy, or alcohol, you know, before, a lot before you do the ayahuasca or for iboga, he's saying that you can just skip a dinner the night before the ceremony and that's that's pretty much it you know not take any stimulants like coffee and things like this but you don't need to have like a special diet so both of them are really different in approaches and in in sensations and in in length and he's also he's also mentioning uh why when you have to use one or the two so he's he's saying that if you have an addiction problem or eating disorder or self-limiting mental issue, you should definitely try it Iboga. Uh, if you prefer to know the answers for your question, to feel and see your answers, then you should try Ayahuasca because, because it gives wow. you more of, a, more of an image. And then it says, if you want to experience something that's unlikely and that you find on the physical plane, then you should choose Ayahuasca. And then if you want to make peace with yourself and communicate with, with your family members and friends and, you know, uh, basically heal your mental illness, you should definitely choose the iboga. And then it says, uh, if your main, the roots of the main cause for the illness is physical body, then for the mind, choose iboga and for body, choose ayahuasca. Basically the same thing that you say with the, with the weed, with the, with yeah. the, you know, one is more connected to the body, so the ayahuasca is more earthy, while the iboga is more on the mental, mental plane, I guess. So it's the yeah, same wow. thing. It's the same thing as Definitely. you said. That's what I just said. Yeah. Also, um, uh, I quoted from this guy Stephen Gray earlier. He was um, saying that also, like, the thing with like spiritual psychedelic. Um, uh, states of conscience and non spirit and non uh, psychedelic uh, states of consciousness. It's like when you're having a psychedelic consciousness, it's like uh, your f it's like first hand knowledge, unconditional. Whereas mm -hmm. when you're not, you're going by society's concept. So you also you have an understanding of the universe in a second hand concept. It's like with psychedelic you're going to the source but without yeah. you're just leeching off other people basically yeah exactly uh, are you aware of the um the hallucinogenic uh substance they use from the toad called uh yes, yes, I... Alpharis. Yes. Alpharis. yeah I've been got a lot of good notes on that. If you want me to expand, sure. On that. I was gonna go into that kind of retreat. It actually was two days ago here in London with the frog. Oh, wow. Yes, uh, but I I didn't go. It was like hundred and seventy pounds, I think, without staying in the house. Just you know, just going for the for the process and not staying inside the building and you know have like dinner and everything. But it was yeah. it was exactly to have the the poison like from the throat uh the throat uh putting onto the frog putting onto your skin that makes you cleanse but yeah, yeah. Give, uh, give the listeners more insight of that yeah well basically um there was a doctor mm -hmm. um in mexico called the doctor octavio rettig and he used to be like addicted to like crack cocaine and like crystal meth and uh some like hard drugs and he come across a shaman who um told him to uh try uh the the toad uh the the substance from the toad mm -hmm. and once he tried that he became like a devoted doctor to the substance and he goes around to like all the ghettos in mexico and like he helps like drug addicts like come off and have spiritual like experiences and stuff like that. And he explains that um, basically the way they get the, they extract the subject, the, the substance from the toad, it, the toad doesn't get hurt at all. What is in its hormones, like they squeeze it and it splatters like uh, this liquid on a glass, on a piece of glass. Mm -hmm. And then what they do, the glass, once that, um, 
liquid dries up, they like peel it off and it like looks like skin. Mm -hmm. And what you do is like, uh, you bring your patient maybe to like, uh, somewhere with a really nice view, like in the video I watched, it was, uh, they went to the beach and uh, there's a shaman and a doctor and they kind of, um, you smoke it through a pipe and then they hold your hand and then they kind of guide you through it. And apparently it's just, apparently it's like four times stronger than ayahuasca. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I know that it's stronger, yeah. Yeah, so like, um, and the main purpose of why they use it is to bypass the ego, basically. That was one of the main reasons that uh, the people use it. Again, it's just connecting with the oneness of the universe and uh, going past them layers or unveiling, or unveiling, um, how can I say, going past that veil of the body, basically, and Wow. Just so united. So but... you have tools. Sorry? We do have the tools to, you know, yeah, with this... raise ourselves better. Yeah. I'm... Oh, with well, this, there's so many tools, and it's just annoying because what make... once you're aware of it, it's annoying because it makes you think of, oh, why have they been hiding? Why have they been suppressing us from these tools or hiding these information? But then once you research it, you realise why then we've probably got so much potential and so much things within us, but we just kind of need to unlock them. True. And for anyone listening as well, I just want to say, like, for myself, I have experimented in cannabis, and that's the only really psychedelic. Some people don't even say it's a psychedelic. I would, I would say it is. Obviously, it's a lot milder than ayahuasca and mushrooms and stuff like that but again it depends on the dose you take but um yeah i would just say that if you are going to do any drugs or any psychedelics or hallucinogens just be sensible and just do what you need to do don't overdo it because you might do it and then you will might get a bad experience and then you might miss out what it can actually really give you. Do you get what I mean? Yes. So if you do it simply, you can get the goodness out of it. Whereas if you do it uh, in an undisciplined way, it can affect you mentally. Mm, definitely. You, get what I mean? you can get like, worse than you actually Yeah, because Yeah, and... Um, Oh, what was I going to say? I've lost my train of thought now. What was we saying? Oh, yeah, I was just saying about, yeah. Um, yeah, just do things sensibly and do it in balance. And I'm not, I would like, how can I say? And I always, I will say personally as like a user and experiment of cannabis, I would say that it's more for adults and not for young, younger people. Because again, it can... Uh, yeah. distort your perception of reality. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Like once is because I started personally when I was like only like four four years ago. Do you get what I mean? A lot of people when they start smoking, it's usually at a young age through school or through their friends and you know. But whereas I've actually kind of started doing it for a spiritual reason rather than recreational. Exactly. So it just. Uh, I'll just yeah again just for people just whatever you do just do it sensibly and do your own research don't take people's words for it as well sure. and, just, and also like um, uh, you said like find try and find out about yourself a bit more and before you obviously it's an ongoing experiment when you are trying to find yourself anyway but, um, yeah, it's just, yeah, just be sensible, basically. That's what I'm trying to say at, at the end of it. But um, there's a lot of good things we can get out of psychedelics unless you use it for the goodness. Is there is Not there for... anything else you'd like to do on before we... Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I've got like, uh, I've made over like other little notes and that, but generally I've covered what I want to cover mainly, unless you have any questions you'd like to ask me. Well, which do you think you'd like to try first, the ayahuasca or what, what psychedelics? I mean, I've heard that um, mushrooms are a good experience. Like if you get mm -hmm. mild mushrooms, it depends how deep you want to get, I suppose. Yeah. Cause and how much you want to Yeah, exactly. I mean, like... Uh, I've thought of ayahuasca and thought of these stuff before. And uh, personally, it, w I w it would be a really interesting experience. But because I mean, if you if you know yourself and you've got nothing to hide, and then do it. Do you get what I mean? Because obviously, like we said, it's going to bring out the truth. Every single thing you've done, whether it's good or bad, it's going to tell you about it, and you've just got to be ready. It's whether you're ready to face up to it. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it depends and to what you're looking for, really. This is why a lot of people don't like using it, because mm -hmm. like, like um, going back to um, like marijuana, the, the Stephen Gray said that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some people, when they smoke it or have it, they start feeling sick because their minds are telling them, "Oh, I'm not ready for." Basically, I'm not ready for this information yet. It's almost like the mind tricks them mm -hmm. because they're not ready for it. They start feeling sick or acting up, and to get what I mean. So, again, there's a time and place for it for everyone. I think once you know you have to do it, you'll get your signal. Yeah, exactly. You know when you're ready. So just yeah. for the listeners, don't push it. Don't push it. Just, you know. Yeah, you definitely. Know don't ready. push it. And Try. It, you will know. Again, this is, we're not like, obviously this is just to talk about what each thing does and that. And just, it's not really to promote it. It's just basically just for knowledge and stuff but um yeah just it's weird like sometimes as well some one will say i'll try and explain it but you have to do it yourself or you have to go through a spiritual awakening yourself for you to know what it's really like exactly. you can't you won't know through other people's um experiences you can still learn from other people's experiences yeah. obviously yeah. like in the sense but to know about yourself you have to experiment with yourself basically it's like it's like learning astrology mm -hmm. i've learned ast most about astrology by learning about myself my chart and do you get what i mean yeah. and then you just you pick it up yeah, that's uh, well, that was a lovely topic pretty... that we touched on. I hope, um, you guys all enjoyed it, our listeners. Yeah. And in the next episode, we'll surprise you with another really interesting topic, as we always do, right? Yeah, definitely. yeah, I just want to thank the listeners again for tuning in and listening. And Me I hope too. you enjoyed the information we give out. And, um, just want to say. Uh, we're not claiming to be experts on these subjects or we just get together to discuss ideas and exchange ideas and give people some information that they can look up and expound upon it themselves. True, definitely. All right, brother. Thank you very much for being here tonight and uh, yep. sharing all this knowledge Thank with everybody. Yep, thanks for having me. I hope I made everything clear. And yep, peace out. Peace, everyone. Peace.